Right, on to uh, sport now, and we're going to be looking at the challenge, well, one of the challenging issues that uh, many sportsmen and women face at the moment, mm. Lewis. Yeah, we're talking about racism in today's main, main feature, and I guess there's a lot been made about the role that sport has to play in tackling that social issue since sports come back after Project Restart. And there's been a, a lot of attention around that, and that's continuing this week on, on the BBC, because throughout the week the BBC is highlighting racism in football through the stories of people working in the game. Today I've been to meet Tunde Adelikan, who from his base in Basingstoke in Hampshire is the head scout for the Nigeria men's football team. It's his job to look over a talent pool of over 600 players across Europe, including many here in the South. Over the years, I've spoken a lot with players who have actually gone through a sad and unfortunate experience of racism. We talk about racism in football, but it's a reflection of the wider society. The lack of education within the community to what the black person is needs to change. The mindset, the perception has to change. And if it changes outside there, then it will change in football as well. In the 24 years since Tunde moved to Hampshire from Nigeria, he's seen a lot of change in football. In a pre-COVID world, his base in Basingstoke allowed him to travel across Europe with ease. In lockdown, technology was his saviour. Whatever the challenge, the objective remains the same. The core aim is to actually get the right player with the right skill set to come and play for Nigeria. It doesn't matter whether he's based in Nigeria, whether he's based in Europe, or whether he is one who has played for a European team before and can switch allegiance to Nigeria. We want the best player from whatever category, however we can get them. Tunde missed out on convincing Southampton's Michael Oberfemi to switch allegiance from the Republic of Ireland, but has a number of other talented young players on his radar including Reading's Ovi Ajaria, who's recently decided to switch to play for the Super Eagles. Ovi has actually decided already to join us. He's written his letter, and we are in the process of switching his allegiance to Nigeria in Southampton. We've got Nathan Teller. I'm still watching him. It's great to see that he's now making starts in the Premier League now. Namdi Oforba in Bournemouth. Great player. So the South is blessed. With, with Nigerian origin players. Nigeria were knocked out of the 2018 World Cup in the group stages, despite victory over Iceland, but finished third in last year's Africa Cup of Nations. Like almost of them, my football sons, I've got quite a few across the Nigerian team right now that I have brought in who probably were looking elsewhere. How hopeful are you that the players that you're in touch with are going into a, an era where it is going to be an improved situation, that, that that light has been shone on the issue? Well, I mean, that's the only thing we have got to hold on to right now is hope. We're done with talking. There's been a lot of talk around. Everybody's been saying it. We're kneeling, we're kneeling, we're raising the armed fists and that, but we now need to act. What I've built in myself is that self-belief, that no matter what anybody says about me out there, what do I believe in myself? I believe that I am good at what I do. I believe that I can make progress. And so I don't, I try very hard to ignore the side comments. And if they can, and I know it's very hard, it's very painful, but if they can, we can move forward. Thanks to Tunde Adelikan for sharing his insight today.